Hey guys, back in the workshop now after Brands Hatch Drift Pro, which was last week. Now I've got three weeks before Alton Park, which is a new circuit I've never drifted on, and I think a few of the others as well. But it looks like it's gonna be another super fast circuit, which obviously suits uh, this car and myself pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with that one. Uh, so just been giving the LSZ a service, um, fresh oils, Morris lubricants, etc. Uh, going through it, nut and bolt check, etc. But the reason is we're in here now is Bonnet is off and so is the front bumper. And as many of you probably will have guessed, it's time to change out that awesome 2300 Magnuson supercharger for the new Magnum PI 2650, which is currently sat in the workshop over there. So it's gonna be a little bit more involved this time. Got to do a little bit of rewiring. Uh, got a new valley cover to fit as well. Um, but yeah, I'm actually looking forward to getting this one off and sat side by side next to the 2650 and work out kind of where the similarities are and where the differences are. So then we can see if we can still fit it under the bonnet. Uh, and also if there's any other wiring changes that need to happen as well to make it fit in. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so here they are side by side. Heartbeat on the left, Magnum PI on the right. I think we can now start to appreciate a little bit more about the size difference between the two. Uh, so yeah, like we said before, Heartbeat, nice flat top. Uh, definitely a different design internally. You can see as well that the back of the uh, actual two rotors for the Eaton Supercharger are tucked in on the on the heartbeat, but on the on the Magnum PI, they're stuck out on the back here. So that's a little bit about why I'm concerned about the wiring for my install in particular. Um, but uh, yeah, nothing. so we have the lids off the two chargers now, and you can see why there's a big change in the height difference of the heartbeat compared to the Magnum. So yeah, these are the two intercoolers, two individual ones, one per bank, a bit smaller, but uh, obviously for my, my application, I never saw a high uh, intake manifold temperature, but look at this chart, the cooler that the uh, Magnuson guys have managed to squeeze into this one. So that obviously has a bit of an impact on the actual height of the case itself. But obviously we are gonna be cramming through a certain percentage more air with this one being a 2650 compared to the 2300. So we're gonna be needing that one into the future. There's an obvious thing missing at the moment on the Magnum, which is this one's still currently running the 2010 fly-by-wire throttle body that I got back with the LSZ back in 2011. So that thing has been doing me proud. I don't know why people always sort of complain about the fly-by-wire throttles. If you get a genuine good quality one, they always look after you well. Uh, so yeah, what we got for this one is a bit of a few little trick pieces so first off we have the actual elbow that I need to bolt onto there to allow me to now fit my new Nick Williams monster throttle body so the standard Camaro one is 90 mil and this monster is classed as the 120 the blade actually in the center is uh, 112 but the actual outer diameter of this thing is 120 mil so that's going to be allowing us to flow some serious serious air the guys over at Magnuson said if you're going to be running the 2650, you may as well be running the big uh, throttle body as well to make sure you get the most from the supercharger. So lo and behold, that arrived in the package with everything else. So it's going to be a mental, mental install. That's fly-by-wire as well, um, all plug and play. So uh, John is just going to need to recalibrate the throttle body when he comes to mapping that hopefully on Monday, and then uh, we'll get stuck in. So for now, I'm going to uh, what's it? take the injectors out of this one uh, fit them to the new billet fuel rails that come with the charger uh, on the Magnum PI. Going to remove this elbow because um, the guys over at Goodridge have provided a nice little AN set of lines and stuff to fit into that, which will be good. Uh, get the throttle body fitted, and then uh, we'll get ready to fit the new Magnuson uh, va Valley cover, because like I said, with the rotors being at the back, I need to slightly relocate the oil pressure sensor and then, uh, yeah, we should be ready then to hopefully put this bad boy on. So thanks to Brett, we've got the sexy Magnuson Valley cover on there. Oil uh, pressure sensor is now relocated. So before we actually go and get the monster itself, we're gonna actually start to do some of the rewire just because it's nice and easy to get to the full loom. Uh, we know where everything needs to be now. Yeah. 
So Brett and I have been pretty busy over the last few hours and here we go. Boom, here she is. As you can see, everything on this charger is a bit more supersized than before. So obviously a bigger uh, cover and cooler in there, which then means in turn, we need the Pythons from Goodridge. So uh, yeah, these are four AN12 lines. Probably not as neatly lined out as I'd like to have had them, obviously, but uh, I had to order these from the guys at Goodridge completely blind. I didn't obviously know what the fittings were going to be like. I've got um, Jason's AN12 uh, modified versions of these little Bell aluminium fittings that come with the charger as standard. So he's now modified those to take the AN12s, which is great. It's obviously made some fitment a bit easier um, because I didn't have any 90mm hose uh, bends and stuff like that. So anyway, got them fitted. Got them about as neat as I reckon I can have them for now. That will do for the rest of the season. That'll definitely keep the uh, charger cool. On the super size part is the massive throttle body that is now in position. So we've got the little pigtail on there, which allows me to join that onto my original harness, which is sweet. Got a couple of little Sanko blanks in there for barbs that we don't need at the moment. Got Brett's rewiring in the DEI Easy Loom kit and stuff like that. So we've relocated that sensor. That's where it should be now. So yeah, pretty much. We are close to being able to start, so I need to put on the new fuel line, which goes into here from the original location, and then uh, run the belt up and onto the big eight rib pulley. So as I said before, we're doing it a bit on the quick today because the other sort of front end parts still haven't arrived in the UK from Billy Speed Shop yet. So we're waiting for those. But uh, the guys over at Magnuson said we can actually run the this LSA setup with the 2010 Camaro belt and just run the six rib belt on the six ribs in the center of this pulley. So that will get us by for mapping. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be a good day tomorrow. So better get cracking again. Got the O2 sensor to fit in there as well. Then hopefully it'll be first start. Obviously just be idle and stuff because there'll be a lot more air floating around in the engine than before. So just make sure she can run and pull herself onto the trailer. And then uh, I'll be up to Mr. Lamsley tomorrow. Here we go. So it's been one hell of a long drive down. It feels like an eternity. It is now about four o'clock on Monday. I've arrived at Quantum Tuning. John is in the cell over there, getting a few bits and pieces ready. So it's now time for me to uh, get the Z off. I've got to take the bumper off and stuff like that, just to make it so it's a little bit easier for him to strap it down. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get this, <laughs> this girl fired up and uh, start to uh, chew away the finger, fingernails like I always do every time. But uh, it is a lovely day here. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see what she manages to pull. Here we go. Hey guys, so uh, I'm in the car. You haven't seen a great deal of dyno runs at the moment. Just that one that I managed to record. But uh, yeah, unfortunately the LS said broke the dyno well we think it was the vibrations or maybe the heat from the exhaust potentially yeah that was all she wrote so car is back on the back now uh, he's made a couple of calls so I'm heading back home to my parents house in Norfolk and uh, yeah hopefully tomorrow the boys at Emerald are going to be able to squeeze me in in between a couple of other jobs and finish off the mapping that John has started so welcome to day two of the dyno saga just arrived at Emerald you'll see Dave opening up the door there he's got one car on the rollers the Z is here I'm gonna unhook this thing and then, uh, yeah, pretty much it should be hopefully ready to reverse straight on and get stuck in. So, um, yeah, not a bad day. John is on remote call if we need anything for like part of the map he did yesterday. So hopefully Dave will have a bit of fun. It's actually kind of surreal that eight years ago, Dave actually got the Z running on the trailer almost in this exact spot uh, when I was struggling to get the car running. So it's kind of weird how it's come sort of full circle since the LSZ first started. So I think he's uh, definitely gonna have a bit of a shock when he presses the loud pedal for the first time. But uh, yeah, can't wait to get stuck in now. <laughs> Okay, so let's give you the lowdown. Right, so I'm now sat in my truck, still at Emerald. It is now half past seven in the evening. Um, the story is, got the car on the rollers, um, 
did a few little bits and pieces, calibrated throttle, etc., etc., based off what John had done last night. Did a power run, ended up with 470 horsepower. Bearing in mind the standard um, LS is 430 horsepower. Um, so yeah, something very odd. Carried on the rest of the day, doing different bits and pieces, having a chat with John, having a chat with the boys in Emerald, you know, playing with the time, playing with fueling, all that kind of stuff. Went on and on and on. And uh, long story short is, yeah, there seems to be 300 horses that just aren't there. Um, we ended up doing full compression test on all eight cylinders, completely fine. Um, took the lid of the charger off, checked inside that, checked the torquing of the charger itself. Uh, really not the outcome I was expecting. Uh, we were all scratching our heads. I know John is scratching his head as well down, down at his place. So um, yeah, it's back to the drawing board really. So I'm gonna uh, head back to my parents tonight um, and then travel back up north tomorrow and then work out whether or not I'm gonna put the old charger back on for Alton Park and for Germany, uh, or whether or not Carl or the Wizards here or whatever like that managed to think of anything else uh, for where these miraculous different stable of where all my horses are hiding it. Um, so yeah, I'll sign off this video with this and um, yeah, not quite the outcome we were hoping for, but stay tuned because I will come back hopefully with the new Charger singing its little heart out on the LS3, just like it should be, and uh, hopefully with a big cheesy grin on my face as well. So um, thanks for watching guys, and catch you at the next one.